Hello, welcome. Read this problem, try it out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so we're told here that we have this equation and it, it says t equals 1 over 0 0.0105 times the natural log of a over 5,000. And we're told here that it relates time, okay, so time in years to the amount of money a, okay, the amount of money a, earned by a $5,000 investment. Which statement accurately describes the relationship between the average rates of change of t of time, okay, on the intervals 6,000 to 8,000 and 9,000 to 12,000? Okay, so I found this, the wording of this question very challenging. Um, but let's go over what the premise is here. So uh, the idea is that, let's scroll down a little bit, you take some money, you take $5,000, Okay, and you invest it. All right, so let's say this point right here at the beginning, let's say this axis is T. Let's use black for that. So the X axis is time, and then the Y axis is the amount of money you have. And if you start with $5,000, here's 5,000. So at the beginning, there's $5,000, and then over time, right, the money is growing. It's growing and growing and growing over time. And that's the idea of this problem, except the way they, they set this problem up is that T is essentially the output, and A, the amount of money, is the input. They're reversing these axes, which is not totally unreasonable, right? The idea is that um, these intervals, it's not immediately obvious what's happening here, but if they say the average rate of change of T, so the average rate of change of whatever you're looking at, that's usually your uh, dependent variable. So that's going to go on the y-axis. And you can tell that the intervals, these numbers, 6,000, 8,000, 9,000, 12,000, those are money amounts, right? Not year amounts. When I first saw this problem, I, I just I rewrote this equation in terms uh, so, so of t. So a was isolated, and I plugged in these numbers here, 6,000, 8,000 for t, but that would be, that would be ridiculous, right? 6,000 years, 8,000 years. Clearly, that needs to represent the money that we're dealing with. So actually, this graph, if I just resketch it over here, another rough sketch, uh, we have the amount of money, the amount of money you have, and that leads to some time measurement. So we're essentially, uh, we're actually flipping this graph. And what's going to happen this time is that, at f so at first, there's, there's some amount of money, zero. And that's going to be kind of weird for me because if I was to say, well, okay, you have uh, zero money, how much time has passed? That wouldn't really happen here, right? The amount of money is essentially starting at 5,000. And then the amount of time, so this is 5,000 over here, as the amount of money uh, is going up and up and up. So here it's going to 6,000, 8,000, all the way up to, let's say, this is 12,000 here, 6,000, and then 8,000, and then here's 12,000. Um, what should we expect about the time, right? So in the beginning, time is at zero, and then we're going to need more time to get more money, right? So as the money goes up, the amount of time is going to go up, but essentially the amount of time we need to get more money is going to decrease. It's maybe something like this. And you can see it's kind of like the shape of a logarithm graph right there. Essentially the idea is that it's a reflection of this exponential graph right here. But the idea is that um, as you get more and more money, it's, it's going to take less and less time for that money to grow. And that's kind of hard to see in the graph, but just imagine, let's do a simple example of why this makes sense. The idea, again, is that as you're dealing with larger and larger amounts of money, the amount of time it's going to need to grow a certain interval is going to decrease. So, for example, let's say you have $1.00. And a bank is going to give you 100% interest on that dollar. Yeah, it's really nice, right? 100%. So after one year, what's going to happen? So let's say it's 100% interest compounded yearly. Now that just means that every year you get 100%. So you get 100% on $1. So after one year, what are you going to have? You're going to have $2. You're going to have the original dollar you started with plus 100% interest. So that's another dollar. And you have two dollars. So over the course of one year, right, the amount of money grew by one dollar. Well, what's going to happen over the course of the second year, right? Because now you're starting with two dollars, and you have a hundred percent interest. Again, 
if I said, well, how long will it take for this amount of money to grow by another dollar, right? So how long will that take? Well, after one more year, right after another year, we're going to have $4 because you have the $2 you started with plus 100% interest, which is two more dollars, and that's $4. So over the course of the second year, it didn't go up by just one dollar, it went up by two dollars. So the amount of time, even though we're not finding it here exactly, that it took for one more dollar to increase took less time. It takes less time because we have more money that we're growing, right? So it takes less time to grow by that dollar again. That's essentially what's happening here. Like this question would actually be straightforward if these two intervals, the two money amount intervals were the same. Because it would take less time to go from, let's say, $9,000 to $11,000 than it would from $6,000 to $8,000. Because you have more money and there's more in, there's interest on a larger amount, essentially. Now, all of that rambling, we should just kind of set this up. We should evaluate it. And these, these values right here are A values. So long story short, to really get a sense of this, these are your A values here. You're going to plug these A values into... Uh, this formula right here. That's one way to do it. And you can plug in 6,000 and 8,000. The average rate of change is the slope. So like here's 6,000 and 8,000. So you're finding this slope right here. And then you have, let's say, 9,000. I'm estimating is here. to 12,000 there. Now this is, this is my rough sketch. And it looks like 9,000 to 12,000 is less, but we can't be sure. We should test it out. This is my rough sketch. And we're essentially comparing these two slopes right here. Which slope is bigger? If you look for our choices right here, they have these different options. Number one, a comparison cannot be made. We can compare them. The average rate of change is equal for both intervals, or the average rate of change is larger for the first interval, or, excuse me, the second interval. I'm going to actually use my calculator here because I feel like that speeds up the process. All right, so enough talking about this. Let's solve it. So I go to y equals, I clear off any old equations, and I type in what I have here. So I have 1 divided by 0.0105, okay, close parentheses, natural log, that's right here, of A over 5,000. In our case, it's just X over 5,000. Okay, we're plugging that in, and that's our equation. Okay, so we hit enter. Now I'm going to go to my table. Now, my table is already set to thousands, so, but let's, make, let's pretend yours is not. So I press second window, and I can manipulate my table. I can start at any value. I do want to start at 6,000, and I want my increments to go up by 1,000. So I should enter 1,000 here, and when I'm done, I hit enter, and go back to second graph, and I can see what I need to. So this tells me here's 6,000. The output 17 point, let me take a screenshot of this actually, um, 364, we'll use this data. And let me show you what I would do now. Okay, oops. So here, we're looking at average rate of change, right? So from 6,000 to 8,000, this is our change. So our average rate of change would be 44.762 minus 17.364, the difference of the outputs, right, slope, over 8,000 minus 6,000, 2,000. Our question is, how does it compare? Is it equal? What's going on here to 9,000 to 12,000, this interval here? So that's 88.378 minus 55.98 over 12,000 minus 9,000, which is 3,000. So we just want to know, are these the same? Are they different? And again, I'm going to take out my calculator. So on the left-hand side here, Quit out. Let's do the calculation. I'm going to use parentheses to enclose my numerator. 44.762 minus 17.364 divided by 2,000. And we get 0.013699. Okay, so I'll write that down. 0.013699. That's our average rate of change. And this just means that, on average, it took about 0.01 of a year per, for every dollar of interest that we gained over this time period, right, between $6,000 and $8,000. It took a really small amount of time for every single dollar that we, that we got. It's quick. And then the other case, we have 
88.378 minus 55.98, and I forgot my parentheses, so I don't want to just put divide by 3,000. That'll mess up my order of operations. I would only divide 55.98 by 3,000. So instead I hit enter. That gets me this difference. And then I divide that by 3,000. And that gives me 0 0.010799. So let's write that down. Oops, use red. 0 0.01, what was that? 0799. And this number is smaller than this one. So... In fact, this average rate of change is greater. In other words, it took more time for the money to go from 6,000 to 8,000 than it did to go from 9,000 to 12,000. And that makes a little bit of sense, right? Uh, the money is growing. You have a larger amount uh, here, 9,000, to build interest on. So it takes less time for it to reach 12,000. Then even the difference between 6,000 and 2,000, even though that difference is less, you have less money that you're building upon. Okay, so hope I didn't ramble too much here, but I now know that the average rate of change is greater in this interval here. And if you don't like solving on the calculator, another way to do it is, again, just to plug these numbers in. So you'd plug 6,000 in here, and I'll just show it real quick so you can see kind of what it looks like. Clear this off. You'd plug in, um, you'd find the average rate of change between 8,000 and 6,000. So you have to do this calculation 1 over 0 0.0105 ln of, uh, let's do 8,000 first, 8,000 over 5,000 minus, again, 1 over 0 0.0105. And you could factor that out, it's a common factor, but I'm just going to write it out so you can see it, times 6,000 over 5,000, those are the outputs, and then divide that by the difference of the inputs, 8,000 minus 6,000. And that's the first average rate of change here. And if you did that, you would get this number, 0 0.013699. And then you do it again here, which is plugging in 9,000 and 12,000. And I would plug it in the same order. It doesn't matter, you could reverse it. Whatever order you put the numbers in on, on top, though, in the numerator, you want to keep that order on the bottom. Um, so you'd find both average rates of change and compare it that way, but I, I find that that's a little more difficult. So again, on the calculator, that's the, that's the way to go. All right, I hope this helped.